Morning. So we are back on the house build. This is second part, so we're inside today. Cubits in here, utility room. Rear door has been now fitted. So the back door, a little bit the same material as what we've got on the garage door. It's a composite door, slightly different design. Obviously we've gone for a half panel, um, half panel on the bottom and obviously just over half of it is glazed. And we've had that crittle effect put in. Different effect than the main windows, but ultimately in keeping. So then last of it in here, all the plastering is done now complete. So wait for that to dry. Um, hopefully that'll dry fairly quickly because separately we've actually got heating on in here, which we'll go through in a second. Done waiter is in. So basically I can't open that at the minute because that door basically will slide down, give an opening, and then the cart will be in there that goes from this floor to the next floor. The reason I can't do it is basically turn it off they, they install it. Obviously, this is a carcass around the outside. We then put the board on, the plaster on, fully seal it in. It's fully fire enclosed then as well. They'll come back, commission it, and at that point, they'll turn it on. They won't leave it on in case the cart goes up or down, or we try and move the cart up or down while it's open, and you trap your arm, you trap your hand, whatever it may be. So that'll all get commissioned now, signed off, and then from a fire edge point of view, that's basically finished because that's like a chimney from this floor to the next floor and then we'll put a like a timber door or something facing that off so it looks a bit prettier than what it does now so then plaster wise what we've done here we've just left it like i said before there is a unit going in there so we don't need to plaster down to the floor and we want it so that the back of the unit we've always got the option of being able to get into all that gubbins that's going on there but the heating is on so I've had a massive panic for a good while now. We have installed all of the ground loops for the ground source heating. So they were the 1200 wide by 1200 deep trenches where you have a pipe running down one way and coming back the other. So there were six of them at, I think they were 100 meters long from memory. And then basically we backfill, that goes to the manifold that's outside and the manifold then takes all of that through one or two big massive pipes through to the plant room where we've got all the other gubbins. The reason I've been panicked, one is there's no way of telling whether you've damaged any pipe work or anything that you've backfilled. And the secondly, we've had so much going on and so much wet weather as well with big machinery and equipment that we're constantly driving over them trenches. One time in particular, we had a tractor and trailer and the tractor and trailer sunk. And then you start thinking, oh, what if it's crushed the pipe? What if it's knocked a stone into the pipe and burst it? Or So I'm really pleased that's all gone in, piped up, pressured, running and we've started to feel the heat coming through the floor. So if you shoot back now to when all the pipes were installed, you'll remember that all the, basically the pipes went up and down here, there and everywhere and ultimately all went back through to the manifolds. So the main heat source now from the heat pump is coming across and to this manifold here and then from this manifold, obviously each and every room is piped individually from that. So at the moment we can't fit the room stats which the stats are the things that we were fitting. I didn't want the temperature sensors on the wall because I think they look ugly. So then what we did is we put a probe effectively into the floor. So none of them probes, are, or not all of them probes are connected at the minute. We've got one probe on this floor, on the ground floor, and we've got one probe on the first floor that is just servicing the whole house at the minute. And what it is reading is we've set it to 18 or 20 degrees and ultimately it is doing its job. It's bringing it up to temperature, but what I have noticed is how good it is. I've never actually been in a house with underfloor heating properly before, other than one which I would say that wasn't actually done properly because as we walked across the house or the, the floor in the house in question, there was hot patches, there was cold patches. So it, it can't have been right because as I've started walking around here now and putting my hand down on the floor, it's quite an even level of heat that we're feeling. So then what I have noticed is as you're walking around the house then, I suppose if you went into a, a normal house with a, just had radiators on the wall, that radiator is rising to a temperature a lot higher than obviously the room temperature, and then that is convecting that heat up over and effectively back down as it starts cooling down the other side of the room. So if you were sat right by it, you would obviously feel the effects of the radiator. If you were sat on the other side of the room, you'd be 20 minutes before you felt it. Where the underfloor heating is different, and I've noticed a massive difference, is no matter where you are in the room, it's an even level of heat. Because if you think about it, instead of the radiator doing that one job and, and firing hotter air effectively, or convecting hotter air around the room, you've got a massive radiator over the whole floor. 
So that is absolutely brilliant. It's gone cold outside now, so you can certainly notice the difference when you come through. And it is helping dry out all the plastering as well. So we've got the windows slightly open, so there is a little bit of draft at the minute because the heat recovery system is not up and running yet because we've still got to finish off the electrics on this side. But ultimately, with the little draft through the windows and this convecting the heat from the floor now, we're starting to dry the screed out and dry the plaster out, which is good because on Monday of next week, we've got Ash coming in to do the first mist coat of white paint throughout the entire house. So it's gotta be dry by then. So super excited about having Ash here. Can't wait for that, because that's like the next step or stage of the project is starting and the project of plastering everywhere and all the dirty works effectively are starting to come to an end. So Will is on his last day here today. He's trying to just finish off all the little bits and bobs dotted around and have a real good clean out. So. It's not nice to say, but I'm actually going to be glad to see the back of Will because it welcomes the next stage of the project. Outside as well, it's all going to start going on because this morning we have got Uncle Trev here. So he is outside now. He started fitting ACOs, so they're all going in. And hopefully the next time we come back, we'll have a rook of paving outside that we can have a look at and you'll have some colour on the walls in here. So I'm not going to take you upstairs because upstairs they are cleaning out and everything is dusty and everyone's busy. So what we'll do is we'll leave you guys with a very small house build montage and catch you next time. So if you like what you've seen, hit subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you then. Cheers.